Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk uh, about one reaction of lithium aluminum hydride, and that is its uh, role in the reduction of esters to primary alcohols. The mechanism of this reaction varies a little bit from the reduction of aldehydes and ketones, enough so that it's worth describing on its own, and it's worth uh, mentioning just a little bit here about why uh, esters don't react with sodium borohydride. So let's actually answer that second question first. Uh, and, and the answer to this question goes back to the, the types of resonance contributors that are available to carbonyl compounds. Uh, and in the first video of this series, we actually talked about those kinds of resonance contributors. And so all carbonyl compounds have this resonance contributor where um, the oxygen or the carbonyl oxygen gets a negative charge and the carb carbonyl carbon becomes a carbocation. But esters have an additional resonance contributor where a lone pair on the other ester oxygen can donate into that positively charged carbon, and now you have a cation on that oxygen. And as it stands, this resonance contributor over here on the right is actually more important than the one in the middle because everything has a an octet. And the charges are actually farther apart, which is better. Um, and so because it has this, this donation of the electrons in here, you know, Well, esters are not as electrophilic as aldehydes and ketones. The alkoxy group that's on them is actually electron donating. And you might not have expected that if you were just looking at electronegativities because the oxygen is electronegative, it's not going to... Uh, it's actually going to be withdrawing electrons because of its electronegativity. But if you are considering resonance, that oxygen is actually electron donating by resonance. And we're going to encounter its ability to be electron donating other places in organic chemistry. So esters are not as electrophilic as aldehydes. So because they're not as electrophilic, they're not as reactive. And so that is why you get if you take an ester and try to reduce it with sodium borohydride, you're gonna get no reaction. An important lesson in organic chemistry is that less reactive equals more selective. Uh, and this applies in both cases, or to both things in this reaction. The ester is less reactive, so it doesn't react with every reducing agent. Sodium borohydride is less reactive, so it's more selective in the types of carbonyl electrophiles that it reacts with. All right. Now, the mechanism of, the, of this reaction. Oops. Sulfur there, aluminum, 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 aluminum. So here's our aluminum hydride anion. This mechanism is going to start off looking very similar to what happens to an aldehyde or a ketone. Uh, and then other things can happen. So hold on for the for the ride. Drawing this thing kind of like a, 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 a cross shaped, or if you're familiar with them, this does, this looks a lot like a, a Newman projection. I wouldn't consider it a Newman projection uh, because I'm not trying to represent any specific stereochemistry. So this first step, the nucleophilic addition or nucleophilic attack step is the same but there's a key difference for the ester and the 
for, compared to the aldehyde uh, and the ketone. And that is that there is something on this structure, and I'm looking at you, alkoxy group, that can be a leaving group. And before you uh, figure out where I am and come hunt me down and say, the alkoxy group is a terrible leaving group. Yes, it's a terrible leaving group. Uh, and so in the types of substitution reactions that you've covered before, uh, SN2 reactions, this would never be a leaving group. This is not an SN2 reaction. Uh, we have or have a different mechanism where nucleophilic attack happens first and loss of leaving group is going to happen second. We have a different kind of substrate, sp2 hybridized substrate versus sp3 hybridized substrate. And we are dealing with one of the most powerful uh, nucleophile producing agent things around. And finally, worth noting that this step in which the leaving group leaves is actually reversible uh, because alkoxide anion is itself a pretty decent nucleophile and under the right types of conditions can react with aldehydes and ketones. That's a topic for another video. Now we have an aldehyde. And I want to draw some brackets around this aldehyde. Okay. These brackets have meaning. These brackets mean that the uh, aldehyde cannot be isolated. Uh, I just got finished telling you that esters are not as electrophilic as aldehydes and ketones, right? The aldehyde is more reactive than the ester under these conditions. Um, it's very important when you're talking about things being more and less reactive, you specify under these conditions because you know, reactivity is not some absolute comparison. It needs to need to have uh, a mechanism, a method, a metric of comparison. Okay. So now that we have the aldehyde, let me go get my aldehyde, wait a minute, here we go. I want to copy the aldehyde molecule so we don't have to draw it again. I, wanna, uh, I could have just drawn it in all the time it take, took me fussing over this. Uh, and the lithium, we have our aluminum hydride anion. Aluminum hydride anion is going to do the same thing it did before nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl group. Now I have a different alkoxide intermediate, this time without a leaving group on it. Hydrogen, hydrogen. And finally, Finally, now we can have our aqueous workup, our proton source. Whoops. And that generates the alcohol. This reaction, uh, the aqueous workup also protonates the ethoxide group that we generated earlier. In the next video, I'm going to discuss chemoselectivity of reduction reactions, uh, comparing some other functional groups. Uh, and that will wrap up our series on hydride transfer reductions. Thank you for watching.